Let's jump into that first problem there. Uh, let's get these two out of the way. And we are at task with three things here. We're to find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of f at the indicated point. And then we will use a, a graphing utility, aka our calculators, to, to graph the function and its tangent line and just see visually, demonstrate visually that they look like what we expect them to look like. And then it turns out there's a derivative feature on your graphing calculator that I probably haven't told you about yet. And that may excite you, and it is good stuff, but obviously we, we got to know how to do this without a calculator first. So let's dive right in here. Let's go ahead and find the derivative. And again, I'm going to, I would take a little more time and detail in doing this if we haven't already seen it before. But I urge you to go over your notes, pause this and go over your notes if at any point you're, you're not recalling how this came about. So remember, the derivative is denoted by f prime of x, and that's how we say it out loud. We don't say f apostrophe, we say f prime of x equals the limit as delta x approaches zero, as those two points get closer and closer together, of the rise over the run. But instead of doing y2 minus y1, we did f of x plus delta x minus f of x over, and instead of x2 minus x1, we do, whoops, x plus delta x minus x. And again, I, I write it that way when, when I'm introducing this to students and renewed it to really see the, the, the sort of parallel here between the y2 and the x2 versus the y1 and the x1. But typically what you're going to see in a book is that typically they're going to go ahead and not include these x's. They're going to go ahead and let those cancel out. So feel free to do that if you like. Um, that is our definition of derivative uh, that I showed on the previous slide. So let's go ahead and implement that. Let's go ahead and um, do that for this particular definition of f of x. So that's the limit. And again, we've presumably done some that are a little bit more on the easy side. This is starting to get a little more complicated, but there'll be nothing that's totally brand new that you've never, ever seen before. So f of x plus delta x, that's like taking 1 over x plus 1. That's my original f of x, right? And remember, f of x plus delta x is like taking out the x and replacing it with x plus delta x. And then minus the original f of x. All over, and I'll go ahead and just call this delta x now. All right? On paper, I'd probably move on to another line, but since I'm doing this on video form, I'm going to conserve space a little bit here by... I'm um, just stretching this out a bit. And this is where, since we have a fraction minus another fraction in the numerator, this is where I'm going to go ahead and do the common denominator thing, right? So we'll do x plus 1, x plus 1 on this expression. And then over on this expression, we'll do the x plus delta x plus 1. And this is where students often start getting a little bit scared and feeling like this is getting really messy, these fractions within fractions. But hopefully you have a little bit of faith now that the algebra will all clean itself up. The, the clouds will part, the sun will come shining through. You better be careful though on distributing your negatives as I've presumably warned you about already. So uh, let's focus on this numerator here. And again, that's all over a big fraction bar. So let me do this big long fraction bar. And as far as the numerator goes, um, the, or the two fractions in the numerator, Notice that we now have that common denominator. So let's go ahead and tackle that. And again, let's not foil it out. Let's, let's cross our fingers and hope that that cleans itself up in some miraculous way. Let's not foil that out. But it is now a common denominator. It is, it is a denominator for both of these fractions up top. So I will just go ahead and address both of those fractions over one big fraction bar there. So the x plus 1 here gives me x plus 1. And then when I subtract the x plus delta x plus 1, remember, I'm subtracting it. I need to distribute that negative. So that's going to be minus x minus delta x minus 1. Pause. Let that sink in. That's a huge point if, if you don't catch it again. Make sure you, you, you pause it and study that and see why that is. And again, that's all over delta x. And this is where students want to be lazy, not fill in the blanks. Please don't. Please just be diligent and disciplined. Write the limb. All right. And let's scroll down a little bit here. And here's where things start to clean up. 
um, an x here, minus x, they cancel each other out, a plus one, minus one, the clouds are parting here. All I'm left with up top is a negative delta x. And so we get a good feeling that we're probably on the right track. So I've got that negative delta x over that, that ugly common denominator there, right? So x plus delta x plus one, parentheses x plus one, and that is all over another delta x. So let's go ahead and multiply by that reciprocal. And be careful here, I see a lot of students kind of sloppy in, in that multiplying by the reciprocal, and they even will tell me out loud I'm multiplying by the reciprocal, but then they'll put the delta x up top. Not sure why that happens so often, but we need to be attentive to that. And make sure that I multiply by one over delta x. And we see that's what's gonna allow us to say, aha, that goes away. I'm taking the limit of this, and now I'm in a position where I can direct substitute and get a nice clean answer. So when I go ahead and direct substitute only for delta x, now remember, I'm, I'm, it's delta x approaching zero, not x. So don't make the mistake of putting zeros here. You're plugging in zero for delta x. And that's what's going to give us, I think I squeeze it in here, negative one up top, right? Negative and a one right there. And, oh, there goes the bell, of course. That's all over. Um, and x plus one times another x plus one. Let's not foil that out. Let's just call that x plus one squared. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our derivative. Just to make that a little bit more of a complete sentence, let me rewrite the f prime of x equals. That is our derivative. Now, again, what does that tell us about the original function f of x? it tells us the slope at any x value. So let's, let's see where we're at with, with regards to the original problem and what we are being asked to do. I've got the original problem copied down here. So, and, I, and I'm just bringing the derivative down. So again, we're certainly not done, the deriv but the derivative was really the hardest part of this process. So we're over the, the top of the hill, so to speak. But we still need to find the equation of the tangent line. And I remind you, this is not the equation of the tangent line. This is just the function that will, there's the bell again, of course. This is just the function that will tell us the slope of the tangent line. So let's think of what we're dealing with here. We're, we're dealing with a function that is clearly related to the basic function, one over x, but it's been translated to the left by one. So let, let's start depicting what this looks like. We've got a function that, again, looks like our basic 1 over x function, which is this beautiful thing, which is called a hyperbola, by the way, I haven't mentioned before. And it's been translated to the left by one unit. So there's to the left. And let's go ahead and draw the new vertical asymptote here at x equals negative 1. And what is it we're trying to find here? Well, we want the derivative at this point, 0, 1. So, we want the, or I'm sorry, we don't want the derivative, we want the actual tangent line, right? So we want the actual equation of this line right here. And what does that have to do with this derivative? Well, again, the derivative is what will tell us the slope. So let's go ahead and figure that out. What is the slope of this tangent line at zero, one? Well, the derivative, or f prime of zero, and I'm plugging in zero because that's the x value I've been given, if I plug in zero, that's going to give me negative one over zero plus one squared. Again, I'm just plugging zero into this derivative equation. And that's going to give me negative one over one, or just negative one. So the derivative just told me that the slope of this line, this tangent line, is negative one. So that's a good part. We're well on our way to finding the full equation. Remember the full equation, we, we tend to like point slope form in AP Calc. And that's the one that looks like this, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. That's sort of using the, the little kitty notation. Uh, the grown folk notation would be to say y minus f of x1 equals f prime of x1 times x minus x1. Again, I'm just saying the same thing, but I'm using the more adult calculus notation. And the good news is we've already got most of this information. You just need to identify it. We already calculated up here that f prime, that, that our x1 is 0, right? 
And we just said that f prime of 0 equals negative 1. So I'll put that here, negative 1. Um, remember, a lot of students put the full derivative equation here. You don't want the full derivative equation. You need to plug in the x1 and get an actual constant there. So times x minus 0, and then y minus, and that's where, where we're going to put the actual y value here, which was given to us in this case. But if it wasn't given to us, we could have plugged our x value, 0, into the original equation, and that would give us the, the, the y1. All right, so I'll put a 1 here. And again, uh, uh, this is something I probably told you before. You may stop right here and call it done. The only, in fact, I urge you to do that on test. Um, the only reason to go a little bit further and put it in, in slope-intercept form is to be able to check it on your calculator. And, and we were asked to do that in this problem. So let's go ahead and do that. That would simplify to negative 1x or just negative x. And if I move the, the 1 over, I see it should have a y-intercept of plus 1. All right, so either of those is valid. Um, and when we look at our picture over here to the left, that seems reasonable, doesn't it? Uh, we expected a negative slope because it's going downhill. So we're not surprised by that negative x. That seems reasonable. The plus 1, the y-intercept of, of positive 1, seems reasonable when we look at our sketch. So we're keeping our brain engaged and saying, does this make sense? Well, let's go to the calculator now and, and give us a, be extra sure. So I've typed in the original equation, and um, there we go. I, here, here are my window settings here, by the way, negative 2 to 1 along the x-axis, and negative 5 to 5 on the y. So here's the graph, and if I go to y equals, and I type in that, that tangent line, negative x plus 1, I hope it's going to be tangent. And it is. That may not look like a slope of negative 1, but remember, things are kind of skewed because of the, the window settings. I mean, if I really um, felt strongly about it, I could tweak those window settings and um, let's make them a little bit tighter. How about from negative 2 to 3? But again, at this point, that's just sort of cosmetic. Um, I, I just want to visually see, does that look tangent? And it sure does look tangent at the point zero, 1. So good. All right, so where are we in this problem? We have done part A. We found the equation of the tangent line to the graph of f at the indicated point. We've also done part B. We've used the graphing utility to graph the function and its tangent line. And part C is something you'll probably like if you're not already aware of it, is that you can actually get the calculator to just tell you the, uh, not only the derivative, but the tangent line without doing all the algebra. Now, of course, you know better than to think that that means we're really doing calculus. You know you need to know how to do this by hand, and we'll continue to develop more reasons as we go on in the course why the calculator method alone is not enough. But let me go ahead and show it to you, despite those, those warnings. I'm going to um, delete the tangent line that I have and go back to just graphing the curve. And I'm going to show you a couple different things on the calculator. I'm going to go to second calc, that's right above the trace button, and notice option number six there, dy over dx. That is another notation for derivative. Um, I probably haven't introduced that to you too much yet, but just take my word for it for right now. Let's go ahead and go to that. I'm going to just press the number six on my calculator keypad, and I'm going to now type in the x value that I want. So remember, um, the x value that I wanted was right here. So I'm going to type that in. Type, I just hit the zero key and hit enter. And notice that it tells me that the derivative, the dy over dx, is negative 1. Again, think of that as the same thing as f prime of, of, of 0 in this case. Now, if you're wondering why is it negative 1.00001, um, that's our calculator being goofy, and we've seen that before. We, we should know that that, we'll just say that that agrees with our derivative value of negative 1, which we got right here. Now, even better, oh, the fun is not over here. Even better, this is probably the only time in this class that you'll ever go to this menu, but I'm going to go to second, and then right above the program menu here, right above it, it says draw. And notice that option number five there says tangent. So I'm clicking the number five on my keypad. And again, I'm going to type in the x value that I want. 
zero, I just hit the zero key and hit enter, and ta-da, the calculator will not only draw the tangent line, but it gives me the equation as well. So here is the, the calculator screen, and it gave me the equation right down here. Again, I hope you don't think that's any kind of substitute for doing it by hand. It's a nice way of checking, but we absolutely need to know how to do that by hand. All right, that was example number one. That was part C. Um, that was example number one. Hope that made sense.